The unresolved death of Adolf Hitler's half-niece and romantic obsession, Gailey Raubal, has long been relegated to the murky waters of forgetfulness. In 1931, the young woman was found dead at the age of 23 in the Munich apartment where she lived. The investigation, or lack thereof, was riddled with controversies, propaganda, and dark secrecy, to the extent that it was concluded, just a few hours after the event, that it was a in today's video, we will focus on the relationship between Hitler and his niece, a connection always shrouded in mystery and suspicions of incest. We will analyze how a bond between the man and the young woman became a sinister maze of jealousy and depravity, where many saw Gailey as the prisoner of a pervert. Stay tuned to the screen and get ready for this twisted story. Welcome to another installment of Military History. Let's begin. Hermann Göring, one of the Nazi party's most important leaders and close to Hitler, declared at the Nuremberg trials that Gailey's death had such a devastating effect on Hitler that it forever changed his relationship with all other people. Meanwhile, Hoffmann, a photographer and personal friend of the Führer, claimed that with Raubel's death, the seeds of inhumanity began to sprout within Hitler. These strong statements only underline the importance of a character pushed to the margins of World War II history, whose impact on the actions of the Nazi Chancellor may have been decisive for the most significant conflict of the 20th century. Angela Maria Raubal, or Gelli, as she was called by those closest to her, was born on June 4, 1908, in Linz, and was the daughter of Angela Hitler, Adolf Hitler's half-sister, on their father's side. Gailey's mother worked as a housekeeper in Vienna when her brother's political career began to rise. The budding Führer brought his half-sister to Munich and hired her as a landlady. This was how Gailey entered Hitler's life, at the age of 17, while he was 36. The 19-year age difference did not prevent an intense bond from developing, at Tim's and comfortably familial. From 1928, uncle and niece got to know each other better as they move it into an apartment in Munich together. By then, the girl was only 21 and had transformed from the daughter of a domestic worker into the queen of the court, described as the king of Munich, something that provoked admiration and envy. At that time, Hitler had already begun his climb to fame and notoriety from the National Socialist Party with tangible prospects of becoming the next leader of the nation. The leader of the Third Reich had shown a preference for Gailey from the beginning and, as he publicly claimed, was only taking care of his niece to provide her with a good education. She started studying medicine but soon left her studies to pursue singing and acting. In a loving gesture, her uncle hired the best teachers from all over Germany to instruct her. Hitler took her to all public events they went to the theater and every night they were seen dining in the best restaurants in the city. Witnesses from that time who saw them together claimed that he seemed happy in her company, almost human. However, the young Gelly began to attract her relative's attention in a slightly darker way. She was an attractive young woman and Hitler enjoyed showcasing her as a trophy to his party colleagues. It made him feel vigorous and masculine or so observers from that time say. Over the months, the relationship became more strained, as the Führer began to want to keep Gailey exclusively for himself and prevent her from seeing any other man with whom she could have even minimal interaction. She became the prisoner of her single uncle, who indulged her every whim but treated her like a jealous husband. For example, when he caught her having a relationship with another young man, he sent her to live with a friendly couple for a while to keep her away from temptation. Hitler could not bear that Gailey was not exclusively his. Faster, faster. Faster. Stop. I'm freezing, Uncle. Shh. Gailey! Don't
It's true I love Gailey, and maybe I can marry her. But as you well know, I am willing to remain single. Therefore, I reserve the right to monitor her male relationships until I find the man who truly suits her. What she considers slavery is nothing but prudence. I must take care of her so that she does not fall into the hands of any scoundrel. These are Hitler's exact words shared in confidence with Heinrich Hoffmann, his friend and personal photographer. What was clear was that any man who had contact with Gailey was considered a scoundrel by Uncle Alf, as Raubal called the German Chancellor. In a fit of rage, the Nazi leader fired his chauffeur, Emil Maurice, with whom Gailey had an affair at the age of 20, even threatening him with death with a firearm. Growing increasingly possessive, he began to prevent her from leaving the house without his surveillance or that of a party member. So Gelly started living in a gilded cage. This confinement was unbearable for the lively and explosive young woman who dressed with more audacity than the women of her time. The curious thing is that Gailey represented everything contrary to the Aryan woman that the Nazi clamored for in his speeches. With her black hair, her unconventional behavior, her rebellious character, and her strong Viennese accent, she embodied everything that the true German woman was supposed to reject, according to National Socialist doctrine. There were reports that she had bruises over her body that may have come from being punched. These weren't authenticated or corroborated. But it's possible that he lashed out at her. I wouldn't say that's proven, but it's possible he did that. Um, it does fit his possessiveness. After the affair with the driver Maurice, her freedoms and permissions were severely reduced, and each of her movements was monitored by Hitler. During those years, Gailey had other brief romances, all in secret and behind her uncle's back. With the excuse of protecting her and keeping her away from those who could harm her, Hitler was possessive and poured all his obsession onto her. In letters to her mother and friends, Gailey Raubal spoke admiringly of Uncle Alf, recounting how he took her out to dinner and the relevant personalities they encountered, but made no mention of Hitler's unhealthy domination over her. The sexism within National Socialism is undeniable, and Hitler's relationship with women was always murky. Those who knew him during those years claim that Gailey was the only woman he loved and that Ava Brown was a passionless relationship that he endured just to avoid being alone. The fact is that the women with whom the Nazi leader had deep relationships always fit the same description. They were all of a lower social class, much younger, and, most darkly, he made them economically and socially dependent on him. At that time, the Fuhrer was in the midst of rising to power, so he was at the center of public opinion. The incestuous relationship he maintained with his niece was already beginning to attract attention, and some party members were concerned about the rumors circulating. There were whispers that it was a perverted relationship, and that Hitler subjected the young woman to aberrant practices against her will. No one can assert with certainty that the relationship between uncle and niece was of a sexual nature. What seems undeniable to most historians and biographers is that Hitler, 19 years older than the girl, was simultaneously uncle, platonic lover, provider, and captor of Gailey. Some researchers go further and suggest, based on alleged letters and evidence from the time, that there may have been acts of coprophilia, golden showers, sadomasochism, and non-consensual relationships between the girl and the Fuhrer. After the fall of Nazism, a supposed friend of Gailey claimed that she had confessed the abuses her uncle subjected her to. The young woman's words would have been, my uncle is a monster. No one could imagine what he demands of me. She was supposed to have told Emil Morris that Hitler made her pose for pornographic pictures naked, uh, standing over him, and even uh, defecating on him, that Hitler uh, was a coprophiliac. These rumors were seized upon naturally by Hitler's political opponents, especially by the Social Democrats, and they were published in various Social Democratic magazines. Never proved, I must emphasize that,
outside of whether these perversions were true or not, what is clear is that Geli Raubal was immersed in a toxic relationship that may have led her to commit a desperate act. There are numerous conflicting versions of what happened, none of which have been clarified at the time of making this video. Many mysteries surround the event. The lack of evidence, the elimination of reports, the absence of even an autopsy on the body, an unsolvable puzzle of which only three certainties exist. Firstly, it is confirmed that Geli was Adolf Hitler's great love. Secondly, her questionable death was silenced to prevent it from harming the Nazi leader's political career. Third and lastly, there is the mystery of how deeply this loss hurt the Fuhrer and the question of whether this pain was responsible for the atrocities that followed. Geli has become increasingly despondent and miserable, as indeed you would be if you were imprisoned by a man that she would describe as a monster. Um, Hitler wouldn't let her go anywhere, and it seemed that she had somehow developed a relationship with a young man from Vienna. The biggest crime in Hitler's eyes about this young man was that he was Jewish. So this is obviously not a fantastic relationship for Geli to be trying to have behind the back of Hitler. Another interesting and sinister theory suggests that Himmler, the new head of the SS at that time, and a powerful member of the Nazi party, visited the young woman and convinced her to commit suicide for betraying Hitler, as she was supposedly pregnant by a Jewish lover waiting for her in Vienna. A different version maintains the love triangle but suggests that it was the Fuhrer himself who ended Gailey's life. The last of the versions considered is that Raubal was indeed a victim of despair and decided to end her life. Geli Raubal's body was found on the morning of September 19, 1931, in her room on the second floor of 16 Prince Regentenplatz in Munich. The police arrived at the scene promptly after a neighbor reported hearing a gunshot. On the desk, an unfinished letter suspected to be the last thing the young woman did in her life. When I go to Vienna, I hope very soon, let's drive to Semmering and, were the words on the paper, alluding to her meeting with a supposed lover. On the floor, a large puddle of thick blood was beginning to dry. A bullet pierced Geli's heart. Beside her, Uncle Adolf Hitler's Walther G-35 pistol. The girl was only 23 years old. We saw a coffin being carried out of, of the entrance, and and there were rumors that uh, I think a niece of Hitler's was living there, and that she died, and speculation of how she died and why she died, and, and I think there was there was truth in it. The coffin was carried out; and it was a woman, but of course, no confirmation ever. The girl's death was quickly classified as and the police were prohibited from investigating further. A subsequent complaint forced the case to be reopened months later, but a judge took over and closed it again in just a few hours. It was no coincidence that this magistrate, Franz Gertner, became the first justice minister of the Third Reich in a short time. No one seemed surprised that Gale Raubal had given no indication of this tragic event, nor that she had left an unfinished letter addressed to a man talking about their future together nor did the perverse characteristics of the relationship or the sinister recurring behaviors of her uncle toward her weigh in. According to police investigations at the time, just 15 minutes after the Nazi leader left the house after a heated and violent argument with Gailey, the girl made the fatal shot. Hitler was completely devastated after the incident, falling into a deep, almost catatonic depression. They had to watch him for several days because he hinted that he would take his own life. The room where it happened was preserved as a sanctuary for the Fuhrer, who filled it with flowers daily. From that day on, portraits of Geli were never absent wherever Hitler lived or worked. Despite the demonstrative nature of the Fuhrer's final rites for her, the shadow that hides the truth of her death still looms. Some claim that Geli Raubal's death resulted in Adolf Hitler losing the last vestiges of humanity he had left, and finally becoming the inhuman being he ended up being as the Nazi leader. 
This theory does not seem to have much support among those who argue that the monster was always there. We are nearing the end of this installment, and we wanted to ask you, do you believe that Gailey Raubal indeed took her own life, or was she murdered by her uncle? Share your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next installments of Military History.